Hi, welcome back to recitation. One of the things you've been learning about in lecture is how to solve some max min problems. How to find the maximum or minimum of a given uh, function oh, given some constraints and, and, and figure out where it, where it reaches its largest or smallest value. So here I have a, a particular um, example of such a problem. So we're going to build a cardboard box. And our cardboard box has, has to meet the following criteria. So its volume has to be three units. Um, the front and back of the, I guess front and back of the cardboard box are going to be made just of, of single thickness cardboard. But the, the two sides, the left and right, are going to be made double thick. And the bottom is going to be made triple thick. Well, we're not going to have a top. It's just going to be an open box. So it's going to have five sides, um, two of single thickness, two of double thickness with the bottom of, of triple thickness. So the question is, there, there are you know, a lot of different shapes of box with, with three total volume, three units. So the question is, what, what dimensions should this box have so that we use the, the, the minimum amount of cardboard possible? All right, so we, we want the dimensions of the box that use the least total amount of cardboard. So why don't you pause the video, work on that for a while, come back and we can work on it together. I hope you had some fun puzzling this one out. Let's, let's have a go at it. Um, so, so to start, I think I'd just like to draw a little picture of a box. So here's my my cardboard box. Its top is going to be open, say. No, so let's give it, we, we want to figure out what its dimensions should be um, in order to minimize some, some expression. So let's, let's give them names. Right, so I think a natural thing to call them is we can call one of them x and one of them y and the, and the height z there. So if we give the, the box these, these dimensions x, y, and z, we need to ask, well, first of all, what is its volume? And second of all, how much cardboard is used? And as long as we can keep the volume equal to 3, what's the least amount of cardboard we can use? So the volume of this box is just x, y, z, and that has to be 3. So we know x, y, z is equal to the volume, which is equal to 3. So we have a constraint on x, y, and z here. Um, and the thing that we want to, to optimize, that we want to find a, a minimum for, is, is, the, is, the, is the total amount of cardboard used want to minimize. So let's, let's talk about how much cardboard is used. So the bottom of the box is triple thick. So its area is x times y. So the total amount of cardboard used is 3xy. Now the front and back of the box are single thickness. And they have area x, y, but they're, they're uh, sorry, not x, y, x, z, right? This height is, is z, so it's x times z. And there are two of them. So we have x, z total cardboard in front and x, z total cardboard in back. Oh, I guess this has another segment there in back because <laughs> it's an open box. Um, so x, z, and x, z, so that's 2x, z coming from the front and back. And from the two sides, well, each side has area y, z. There are two of them, and they're double thick. So that contributes 4y, z to the, to the total amount of cardboard used. So this is the total amount of cardboard used. We all, and we know uh, x, y, z is equal to 3. So we want to minimize this. But we want to minimize this taking this into account, taking this, this restriction on the, on the volume into account. So what we can do is, is you can realize that we can just eliminate one of these variables. right? We can, we can say z is equal to 3 over xy. That always has to be true. And if we make that substitution in here, then, then we'll be able to, to minimize this expression without regard to, to any constraint anymore. So from xy z equals 3, we have z equals 3 over xy. So we want minimize to minimize what we get when we plug 
z equals 3 over x, y into here. So that's 3x, y plus, well, 2x times 3 over x, y is 6 over y plus, and 4y times 3 over x, y is 12 over x. Um, and uh, one other thing I guess we haven't mentioned explicitly is that this is a physical box. It has actual dimensions, so its dimensions have to be, you know, po their lengths. They have to be positive numbers. Um, so we want for x to be zero, uh, positive, and we want for y to be positive numbers. OK, so, so now we've got this function. And there aren't, x and y can be anything, any value of x and y we choose. This describes the amount of cardboard used in a box with those dimensions on its base that has volume 3. All right? So we want to we wanna minimize that. So now we, get, we've, we finally got to the point um, of our calculus. Let's, let's call this function, uh, let's give it a name like, I don't know, f, <laughs> f of x, y. Um, so we want to find the global minimum of f. We want to find the absolute least amount of cardboard that we can use. Um, so there are several possibilities for where a global minimum can occur. It can occur on the, uh, some critical point of the function. Or it can occur on the boundary of the region where the function is defined. And in this case, that includes the possibility that it can occur as x or y or both go off to infinity. All right, so, so we, have to, we have to look at those, at those possibilities. Um, in particular, we have to look at the, at the critical points. That's one of the possibilities. So, so the critical points of f. So we need, to, we, we need to find out what those points are. So in order to find the critical points, well, what do we do? We do the usual thing. We look at its partial derivatives. So we need the first and second, oh, sorry, the first the, the, partial, the first partial derivatives with respect to x and y, we need both of them to be equal to 0. So we need fx equals 0 and fy equals 0. Well, what? OK, so let's, let's um, write down what that means over here. Um, so what, what is fx? Well, we just take the, the partials. So it's 3y plus we take the partial of 6y with respect to x, and we get 0. We take the partial of 12 over x with respect to x, and we get minus 12 over x squared. So that's, the, that's fx. And we need that to be equal to 0. And fy is equal to 3x minus 6 over y squared. And we also need that to be equal to 0. So if we solve this first equation, for example, we could solve it for y in terms of x. And that tells me that y is equal to, I need, let's see, 12 over x squared divided by 3. So that's 4 over x squared. Now I can plug this 4 over x squared in down here. And so I get 3x minus 6. Well, 6 divided by 4 divided by x squared quantity squared is 6 times x squared over 4 squared. That has to be equal to 0. And I can, let's see, I can rewrite this. Maybe I'll divide through by 3. That 3 isn't going to matter. So it's x minus. So then I'll be left with 2 times x to the 4th over 16. So that's x to the 4th over 8. So x to the 4th over 8 equals 0. And you can see in this equation that either x is equal to 0, or we can divide by x, and then we get x cubed equals 8. So x equals 0, or x cubed equals 8. That only solution is x equals 2. Now, it's easy to see we can't have a box with x equal to 0. right? Our, our function is not actually defined at x equals 0. Over here, you'll see right our function had, had, had a 1 over x, well, a 12 over x in it. So we can't have x equals 0. So, so that's not going to be a critical point of this function. x equals 0 isn't going to lead to a critical point. So OK, so, we, so we are, our only critical points are going to happen when x is equal to 2. Um, and when x is equal to 2, we can go back up here and we saw that y 
was equal to 4 over x squared at our critical points. So the only critical point critical point is 2, 1. OK. So that's our critical point. So now we want to think about, is this point going to be uh, a maximum or a minimum or, or, or what? And, uh, is it, it, and where is the global minimum of this function going to occur? So remember that the global minimum of this function can occur either on the critical points or on the boundary, or at a point where, where x or y is going to infinity, in the limit, I guess I mean. Um, so let's go back here and take a look at our function here. So we can see from the expression for this function that if x and y are going to infinity, this is no good. This part's going to go to infinity. 3xy is going to go to infinity, and these are going to be positive. So f is going to go to infinity. Okay, so, so as, as, as the dimensions of our box get very, very large, the total amount of cardboard used becomes infinite. Um, also, if x or y gets closer and closer to 0, right? that's at the boundary, well, if x gets closer and closer to 0, then 12 over x gets closer and closer to infinity. And if y gets closer and closer to 0, then 6 over y gets closer and closer to infinity. And again, all these terms are going to be positive because x and y have to be positive. So in those limiting cases, the function f of x, y gets infinitely large. So along the boundary and as x and y go to infinity, this function blows up. It gets very, very big. So that means the only place it could have a glo it, it, so well, it has a global minimum. The only place that global minimum can, can be is, is at a critical point. And we saw, if we walk back over here again, that the only critical point is the point 2, 1. All right? So that means this point has to be a global minimum for the function. Now you might, out of curiosity, you might ask, how much cardboard are we actually talking about in that case? Um, since that's really the one part, I guess it wasn't really part of the question, but it's an interesting thing to ask. So in this case, we use f of 2, 1 equals, well, let's see, so that's 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18 units squared of cardboard. Um, now, I guess one thing you might notice is we didn't use the second derivative test here. And the question is why, I mean, we, we concluded it was a, a, a global maximum without ever using the second derivative test. But the second derivative test is the, sorry, global minimum, pardon me. Um, and the second derivative test is the thing that tells us whether things are minima or maxima or saddle points. So why didn't we use it? Um, well, the answer is the second derivative test tells you whether something is a local minimum or maximum or, or or whether it's a saddle point. Um, so if we had applied the second derivative test at this critical point, what we would have learned is that this critical point is a local minimum. But being a local minimum isn't enough to guarantee that it's a global minimum, because we could have on the boundary or as x or y goes to infinity, we could have that the function value gets smaller and smaller without bound. Now in this case, we showed that the function doesn't do that. It gets larger and larger without bound. And so that meant that, that the, the, that minimum point really is the global minimum. Um, but the second derivative test isn't enough to conclude that something is a global minimum on its own. You really do need that extra analysis that we did. I'll end there. <laughs>